All right, hey, what's up YouTube? Chris Gardner here today and we are going to go over a little bit of stitching some 360 spherical panoramas with super fisheye type lens. Now in my example, I'm going to be using the Sunex 5.6 millimeter super fisheye fixed focus lens. Uh, I'm running it on a Canon DSLR, but this should work on just about any full fisheye that you have. And a full fisheye is any camera that will uh, you know, show you this full circle here when it comes to the output. So this was uh, an HDR bracket set, but we, for our purposes, are just going to you know, leave out the extra frames and we're just going to go with the neutral exposures because that's all we need here. I am in a software called Huggin, and this is a super powerful um, panorama stitching software. And let's just go ahead and see what we get just like this. So I've dragged them in. Uh, the, you know, this doesn't put metadata about the lens into the file, so it doesn't really know what's happening here. So we're just gonna create control points and Huggin is going to run through its regular process. 37 control points is about normal for what I usually see like this. And then we are going to go and let's get our positions and barrel distortion because this is a whole lot of distortion and we want Huggin to do its best to clean it up. So let's just see what we get. Four pixels is the maximum deviation, which is deviation between one point and another. So that's actually really good. Uh, let's have a look now at how it looks, but this is a little weird. We got all sorts of black stuff. So what it's doing is it's taking in too much of all this. And that's where, you know, the main part of what we're doing here is going to come in is we're going to be making image masks so that we can stitch these super fisheye or, you know, full fisheye images uh, super easily. So what we're going to do, let's start with the first image, create a new mask and starting from right here. So usually, you know, in your uh, nadir, you are going to have, uh, you know, some amount of your tripod showing likely in almost all cases, your tripod, your tripod head, whatever. So we are going to go ahead and from there, mask out all of this stuff. And, you know, just the closer you get, the better this, uh, this lens is 185 degrees. So technically with two shots, back to back, you get a full 360 panorama, but that's leaving, you know, uh, next to nothing as far as overlap. Okay, and this is where it gets hard. So we are gonna go here, go down, and then, because what we're doing is we're making an exclude mask here. So we want to select only the black, no information parts of this uh, image. So now we've got all of this stuff blacked out and we are going to call this the exclude region. So now all we are going to do is, uh, well, what I'd normally do or what I've already done in the past is we export this and we save it. It makes this mass file and usually I put it somewhere, uh, you know, on my, my NAS, my you know, network storage so that I can access it from any of my computers whenever I am doing one of these 360 stitches. Uh, but you know, maybe for you it's on your desktop or something, it doesn't actually matter all that much. So we have that ready and now all we want to do is apply the same mask to our other three images. So we got it on this one. Let's go here. Well, first let's go here. Uh, let's copy it. And let's go here and let's paste it. And let's go here again and let's paste it. And now we are good. We can go back to photos. Our control points should be fine, but maybe let's just see how it goes here. You know, since we've, we've kind of taken away some of the information, let's just see how it does. Uh, if it creates any new control points or, or what. and taking his time. Okay, I had 45 control points. Whether or not they're actually valuable ones, we'll see. Let's calculate this again. And now let's go here. And as you can see, you know, we're, we're still getting some of this clouding, but that clouding is actually not going to exist likely when we finish the panorama. 
but as you can see, you know, it's doing a much better job at, uh, at keeping this all together. And I wish I didn't offset that horizon line. There we go. Now, you know, this very likely could be all ready to go. So let's just save it, save our project because you need to before it'll let you export. And we're gonna go to my desktop and we'll just call this uh, test for YouTube. And here is our other one. This is the image and we'll call this final. So now this computer is decently powerful. So we're just going to sit here and uh, watch it happen for a second because we are nearly through the whole thing. And in the meantime, I'll just get ready to pull that up. So as you can see, it's making all of these items are uh, going to be disappeared as soon as it's finished you see and here we go final fused so and let's go open that with uh, automatically open in Photoshop perfect let's just see how it came out and holy smokes not too bad at all let's just go ahead and look for some of these seams see if we can spot them see here's one boom it's gonna cut right down through here and then by the time it gets a little further away from the camera we start to not even notice where it happens which is uh you know great and see and there's a remainder like that's a really good uh stitch line would be not noticeable by most people and here is our other one so boom boom down through there and again hardly noticeable by the time you get there so that's good technically there should let's see there will only be three stitch lines because we only have three photos so here's the other one uh, let's just make it a little bigger so stitch line through here and let's see can we see it even in here hardly at all right um, so what are some of the other things we're seeing here is, uh, you know, this lens is being used on a Canon T5i right now, which, you know, is a little bit dated. It doesn't handle noise so well, but you are definitely able to get some really, you know, usable and decently high quality 360 panoramas when you are using this lens and this setup. You know, it's really uh, a good thing to learn how to use. There are, you know, particularly with this lens, it is meant to come with a an unwarper or a dewarper software, but that's kind of old now, and it's actually a step you can eliminate if you are using Huggin the way I just showed you here. So that is probably all we really need to go over for, uh, you know, how to stitch these full frame fisheye images. I've got another video on Huggin. If you like what you've seen here, there's a few other you know, things you can do and, and tips about how to use it. You can find here on my channel. And otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll just catch you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, please give us a like, a subscribe, or anything like that. It would be great, and we'll see you next time.